Hi, I'm Josh Bell with the Miami Marlins. I wear NeuroGuard to help with strength and coordination when I'm in the weight room and help with balance when I'm on the baseball field. One of the most comfortable, reduces concussion, increases performance. You can't get a mouthpiece like that on the market. Not only is it a great product, it's super easy to use. I recommend it for any player at any age at any level. Thank you guys so much and go check out NeuroGuard Plus. NeuroGuard mouthpiece makes it easier to breathe while playing basketball. The unique design is not as bulky as any other mouthpiece and makes you feel safe from concussions. NeuroGuard, they control my breathing while I'm riding. It stops me getting concussions while I'm wreck. It's very easy to use, so go pick one up today. You know, I'm still doing stunts. You know, in the concussions I've got, and I've been safer with that. I've been I'm doing, like I said, I'm doing a whole lot better in the gym. The so NeuroGuard Plus, you know, once this one wears out, you've got a customer for life. Because I'm telling you people, NeuroGuard Plus is the way to go. And me, Mark Ash, says so. Parents, kids, coaches, Nero Guard. It's the future. Stay tuned. Okay. I mean, that was a good point. I think okay. we might start seeing some go back. Do I look like a Ted? I always love your last minute sayings that somebody's like, what in the hell is he talking about? Hey, everybody, it's Terry Vinaigrette Goodwin. And Ted. And Ted, sideline to sideline here. The Class 3A edition. You know, we sound jovial and happy. It's Thanksgiving it's week. Cold in here. It's always cold in here, brother. Why do we have to have it like in 28 degrees in the studio? It is 63 degrees in studio. There's no way. You know, the funny thing is. is I know 63, and sir, this is not 63. Okay, what well, uh, what was this? I, I know Jack Kennedy and Sir <laughs> Lloyd Benson, the old Texas senator. Yes. Um, you know, a great man. Great man. He's I know, dead now. I, yeah, right? he's been you know? there like 20 years. Uh, I, I know how you're getting older now because there was a time when I was running this, because I've always kept it this cold, that you were right there <sighs> with me. Now, man, you're like got a cup of coffee over there. Oh, yeah, and, I mean, it's freezing. I don't know why we have to have it so cold. And you're in short sleeves. And shorts. And shorts, but <laughs> and barefoot. Pretty good cool. short, bro, <laughs> or shirt, bro. Thank you. This is my uh, Thanksgiving. And by the way, I will be wearing this Friday at our game that we're going to, even though it won't be three A games. Uh, but this is what the, games are we going to? We're going to Wasco versus Honey Grove uh, Saturday night or Friday night, and ja uh, Jasper Jefferson versus Malakoff a Saturday afternoon. We get to do the rare. I used to do this in college all the time, though. Uh, Texas or. Uh, Tyler to Mount Pleasant. That's an odd way to go because you can either try to backtrack and, and hit Longview or you can go We're going six to Pittsburgh. That's what I figured. That, that That's usually the best bet. Maybe if we get out in time, Pittsburgh Hotlands. So you're saying there's but a chance. In college, I was never going between Tyler and Mount Pleasant. No, like I was, you. yeah. I was going from <laughs> tripping balls to. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm talking about something uh, completely different. What <laughs> dumpster am I diving out of, and uh, what gutter am I going to pull myself out of? If L4 Media keeps growing and we finally get to have the... They won't grow. No, well, wow, not wait, here. Wait, wait, I'm the anti-grow. No, no, I'm saying, though, if we ever can have our Grant mm -hmm. and Terry Patreon-only show where we can tell, tell the, some of the stories that we've told each other through the years, your uh, college years story... Oh, uh, the Cubans. Just yeah. the whole thing, guy. <laughs> I mean, seriously. Seriously, fact, check out. It's all verifiable. Hey, look, by, by the way, way, if you want to know more, go to this <laughs> Patreon right here, patreon.com forward slash L4 Media Company. Pledge in. It's less than, th it's less than a truly, heck, it's less than two cups of coffee a month. To, a to, month? That's to, it? That's it. It's wow. three bucks and 99 cents. So you, if you will sign up and we get. If hey, why we, are we switched on the monitors? Oh, no, it'll do that sometimes. No, I like it. Just keep it there. No, don't switch it. I like myself on this side. No, I hate that. Ah, there you go. Thank you. <laughs> but if you, if we get 200 oh. Patreon members or when we hit our 200th Patreon paid member, 
We will we will have a Grant and Terry after dark show. You'll come in studio mm-hmm. late at night. We will start drinking. We'll open up the phone lines just like we and did we'll way tell back you in Love Up. Acuna stories, the, Austin stories, everything, man. Laredo stories. The time I was way about Laredo stories. The the, the, t- the week I had to spend in not good place in Carthage with Bernie TD, the famous murderer. That oh, you did same bed, huh? No, he was wasn't. notoriously gay. No. <laughs> and there's wow. nothing wrong with that. That's not what, what I'm talking about, dude. God, you read I'm, everything. I'm telling you, that's what it sounds so like. So anyway, 200 Patreon only paid Patreon members. Only Patreon members can find Yeah, that out. will always be only a Patreon show. <laughs> Speaking of goofy stuff, we've got to do a little Coach X right here so we can start this because that's how we do this show. If you the first time you listen, and in this show, we're going to break down every 3A playoff game, give you who we think we're going to win and why. But first, we start with Coach X, a real coach. Here we go. Is he, though? Well, not right now, technically. Uh, so, the voice of the people has an adversary. And no, I'm not talking about that guy on Smokey from Lindell, although he is a tool. By the way, we're going to have to have that guy on one night just to let, give him a chance to fight back on Co- Coach X. I, don't think, I think that's the guy that doesn't like me. Nobody likes you. They think you pick against Carthage all the time. Have you talked to my mom lately? Yeah, I have. That's the point. She we, actually... We, so... I went over there for her birthday on Sunday, mm-hmm. and she said she loved me so much. So tell me how she hates me. Well, so she's trying to figure out how to get you not to come to Thanksgiving. Mm. But and she gave me money. Well, that's for Thanksgiving, isn't it? No. Well, she just gave you money? I'm a good dude. I love she you, likes- Mom. Can I, can I come over? <laughs> well, my dad's still in the picture, but... I wasn't... T- wow! I mean... Anyway, I'm talking about a certain tree on a certain show that is certainly not Grant, but a talking tree that only shows up during the playoffs. Playoff tree. This is from Coach X. Playoff tree. Get ready. I have found an old priest. I have found a new priest. The power of the playoffs compel you. The power of the playoffs compel you. Then you go on and say something about my favorite team giving fellatio in Hades. Fellatio in hell. This whole diatribe between Coach X and me is almost like having a front row seat to a train wreck. This guy, is, he's got fired, is a marginal football coach, right? Putting on third down, not knowing the downs. Uh, putting, I don't know, say a receiver at uh, Mike Linebacker. You just can't figure it out. So I love watching this train wreck unfold. And this guy, again, going back to last last week, is arguing with a tree. Do you see where it's just spiraling out of control? Okay, so I, I do want to say this playoff tree. I, I feel like that's your only argument. Like you're not attacking him. I feel like if y'all had a debate, the public would – gravitate towards Coach X because he's attacking and it feels like you're running a little bit. Well, I'm not really running. I'm doing more, I, you know, I'm more of, maybe I'm more of a Democrat, I guess, right? I'm turtling in a little bit, but I'll say this. My life is a lot better than him. I'm out living the high life. You know, not too long ago, Matt Stepp and I from Texas High School, or Texas uh, Football.com, Dave Campbell's, right? Uh, we were out, and we hung out at uh, Hugh Hefner's place. Wait, wait. First off, happy birthday to Matt Stepp. Seriously? Hugh Hefner before he died or after he died? I mean, either both would actually be kind of cool, but really? Well, after he died, it kind of smelled a little weird. But <laughs> actually, I think I might have made a mistake. Maybe it wasn't Hugh Hefner. It was Hugh Hefner from... Basically, from Crawford, right? The mascot, the white faces, the the. And by the way, people might not know, uh, you know, Coach X. I mean, a uh, playoff tree is the uh, mascot of our playoff shows. And last year, that kind of got him in on some circles, and you started hanging out with some really big mascots. I mean, every you know, you're getting Bevo and Uga, and all them are texting you every week. Hey, y'all have a good show. Tell Coach X to go screw himself and stuff. So I'll give you credit. You, you've really, you've really become best friends with some of the great mascots and Matt Stepp, who's the mascot of Texas high school football. Yeah, yeah, Matt Stepp is totally. Uh, he's basically the uh, Kirk Herbstreit of Texas high school football. 
Yeah, and we did hang out at uh, Herfer's place, not not um, Hector's place, which is a little bit different, but you know, smells different, and it's a barn. But yeah, I mean, I I got great like Anna and I, great pals, great buddies. You know, kind of pisses on me every once in a while, but but good friend does it right. So. Yeah, I mean, you know, I've got such a better life than uh, Coach X, and Coach X is just obviously taking out his aggressions on me for having a subpar life. All right. I, I think eventually we're going to have to figure out something with y'all two to maybe, you know. I, I think they should, should maybe go to dinner together and just hash things out. Well, right? and this, the thing is, is I'm trying to get Coach X in studio for one of our state championship watching parties, which we will be doing for – all 2A through 4A like we did last year. We'll have, you know, join me on YouTube and all the others, and we'll watch video-wise, and we're going to have guests come in. Mm -hmm. You might pop up on the video at times at the game. Intern Noe from Outdrank to Coverage is going to come in for a day. And I'm hoping to get Coach X, but I'm kind of worried. Do I need – you remember when we had the those COVID screens, you know? Mm -hmm. Maybe yeah, I need yeah. to put that those up. Those are so dumb. I know, but I was just trying to be well, safe. We didn't know back then. But. Yeah. Yeah, we didn't know that us, you know – Laying together every night was just as dangerous. We thought no, we were I don't think it. we ever laid together, that's, though. That's that, the thing. That's so that that's special weird. beer, the Terry beer I give you. But I'm a little worried that I need that's to put That's the Jesus a... juice you give me. <laughs> I, need, I think that's trademarked. That's what what, what was that game, Rubba? <laughs> weird. The but I, I think I'm going to put one of those up for Coach X and Playoff Tree. If they're in the same studio, I'm worried about the violence, man. It could be like a cage match. It could be. All right, let's get into the football games. We're going to start. Fighting a tree, that would be really weird, though. Well, yeah, you don't know where the next punch is coming from. Let's start Class 3A Region 1. We're going to start with Shallow Water 10 and 2 versus Vernon. Welcome back to the Region Semifinals, you Vernon Lions, you. 9 and 3, this game is Friday. Abilene Sandifer Stadium, great stadium. To Hugh, we pray. Who do you choose? <laughs> Hugh, we pray. To you, Sandifer. Who, who do you got in this one? Uh, man, look, I got shallow water. Their defense only allowing about 16 points a game. Yep. And when you look at those 16 points, look at the the competition that is against. Their schedule has not been an easy one. Then they got Cooper Martin at uh, quarterback, Rylan Brown at uh, running back. Uh, this shallow water team is probably the one, one of the most – Complete shallow water teams yep. we've seen in a while, and we all were kind of thinking, "Ooh, shallow water and Bushland, the rematch." Yeah, well, not I didn't. so fast, my friend. I okay. Well, I, I first off, I agree with you. Look, great season for Vernon. Um, I, I think the future is bright for them. I think hey, true Gibson at uh, at running back. Ty, uh, Ty Scott at uh, quarterback for Vernon, and, and I think Dual they threat. can. I, I think they can give. Uh, shallow are some problems. I just at the end of the day, shallow are just goes on a different know level. That they can give them problems, maybe for a half, right? But I think shallow water pulls away, and it's not even close. Oh man, see, I don't know. I I I, I feel like this is going to end up being one of those closer games. I, I, but we both I just, agree. I, I think the shallow water defense is just too good. No, I, and I don't disagree with you. All right, let's see what Co Coach X has something to say on this one. Hey, Tear Bear, remember when you said Peaster would beat shallow water like a tied up goat? I don't really remember that. What an idiot. That's as dumb as you think our audience is when Grant voices his playoff tree. He I has really got an issue with playoff tree. He does. Our it? audience deserves your respect, Terry Annie. Not to be forgotten like Grant had an orgy. <laughs> Wait, me forgotten in an orgy? <laughs> no, you're the one dude sitting over I, in the corner. I don't know that I've ever been in one of those, sir. And so. Shallow Waters, again, that Terry Bear beer really knocked you out, brother. And Shallow <laughs> Waters is going to win the game like Coach X in a paternity That's case. That hurts so bad. <laughs> all right, so we all three have Shallow Water for all the basically the same reason. All right, and that will take on the winner of Jim Ned and Paradise, uh, 7 o'clock Friday in Springtown. This is a delicious matchup right here. I this told y'all they. I told you Paradise would out physical a very good Bushland team. Yes, you did, and I called you almost crazy. But I go back and look at it now, and I think I, I know why you're right. De uh, the defense for uh, Paradise only allows about 11 points a game. 
That is a quick physical defense that Paradise has. I, I like the way you, you say, you know, we always, you know, you always think about size up front and speed, but with Paradise, it's not like straight line 40 speed, but it, it's just how Quickness. how their their linebackers move in space. Their, yeah. their, their safeties move in space. And, and you know, they really did a good job against Bushland. And then again on offense, you know, we talked about it. You see teams like this all the all the time that they lose that guy. And speaking, by the way, they went 14 games last year, but they lose that guy who graduates like Austin Iglesias. And it I don't want to say it makes the offense better, but you just can't point at one guy on that Paradise offense anymore. Right. Absolutely. I think Paradise is a, a more complete team. I think the Panthers win a close one here. I think Paradise wins. Look, this defense, they got a tough uh, a, a, a tough matchup. In that Jim Ned offense and Gray Beasley at quarterback, uh, and you know, let's not forget that uh, Jim Ned has a pretty darn good defense. Oh yeah, well, hundred percent. This right? is a one possession game yes, at, at it most. Is. But I think I agree. I think I like Paradise in a very close one here. But, I think it'll be Paradise and Shallow Water in the region finals, and what a matchup that would be. I think actually. Paradise any of these would be and, and Jim Ned and Shallow Water. Yeah, any of those. Vernon's the, the, the Vernon. I still am like you. I feel like they're a step behind everybody right, right now. Man, watch out next year for Vernon. Oh yeah, and just watch out for the foreseeable future. All right, let's go to Region Two, and man, we've got two just absolute bangers. One of them we kind of predicted. We all felt that Malakoff versus Jefferson event that game is going to be two p.m. Friday. We'll be at there at that game in Trinity uh, Trinity Mother First Red Stadium. We kind of felt like that game was going to. Happen. Mm -hmm. Liberty Ilo versus Winsboro? No, we didn't. But these two teams come in into it. Of course, hot 10 and 2, 10 and 2. This game is 2 p.m. Friday at Mount Pleasant Parkersfield. If if you're over in Mount Pleasant and you want to see a couple great games, you ain't got to go far. Go to a great underrated place in Sam Parker Field and you'll see Liberty Ilo and Winsboro and then go out and eat and then come back and you'll get to see Honey Grove and Wascom. You yeah. can't, that's four great uh, Honey Grove's borderline East Texas. So three and a half great East Texas <laughs> matchups right there. But let's talk about that Liberty Allo Winsboro game. Oh man. Woo. This is, man, uh Winsboro so complete on offense. Liberty Allo so complete on offense, right? Neither team is going to be one dimensional. So let's go to the defenses. Winsboro's defense has been hit and miss. So is Liberty Allo's at times. Hit and miss. Who's had the tougher schedule? Ooh, I, I mean, I think Liberty Allo. <laughs> I think you're splitting tag, hairs. Yeah, I mean, right? I don't even know if if the tougher schedule is a big deal because both of them are. I mean, they're so close to each other. If that makes mm -hmm. sense. Yeah, uh, I'm taking Liberty Allo in a very close one, though. I think Winsboro is going to be able to run the ball on Liberty Allo, but I don't think that Winsboro defense is going to be able to totally shut down uh, Le's offense. Um, so give me uh, Liberty Allo in a very close one here. I think one of the things that's not being talked about enough is these two coaches, Josh Finney and Brad Willard. When Brad Willard was at oh. Mount Vernon, they played Same multiple thing. times in, yeah. in district. And in fact, 2020, when uh, Winsboro beat Mount Vernon, that was like, whoa, Winsboro's starting to establish itself. And then we see where they are. I think they've won 20 games over the last two years. I'm going with Winsboro. I, I, I think this is literally, there is no, you cannot make a valid enough reason for either team because they are so even. Right. Um, I, you know, again, this might not be the game we thought it was going to happen in this one, but I think this is the best game that's come out of this bracket of, of this region. Um, as far as at the top, no, I'm I talking mean, about the top. I'm talking about the top. Sorry. Oh, okay. I'm talking about, I'm talking about at the end of the day, th I, th I think we're seeing that these are the four best teams in this region. Oh, absolutely. I, Without I, a doubt. No I, upsets. No, just, just mono -y mono. Yeah. Right? That's a good point. Really. Actually, nobody's really been surprised that they're here again. Yep. Winsboro just two weeks ago, took Malakoff to the mat before losing. I've got Mal. I mean, I've got Winsboro winning this game, but man, this is going to be just absolutely. I've got LA. All right. They'll take on the winner of Malakoff and Jefferson. Then two o'clock Friday at uh, Trinity Mother Rose uh, Stadium in I'm Tyler. So Again, excited we will for be this at, one. Uh, man, how do you even look? Uh, Jefferson's uh, running back Cameron Williams, one of the best running backs in Class Three A. Thomas Taylor, quarterback, a dual threat quarterback that can hurt you with his arms and his legs. 
But then you go over to Malikoff and Mike Jones at quarterback, who's unstoppable. There's no way that Jefferson defense is going to slow him down or Jason Tennyson uh, at uh, uh, running back for Malikoff. I'm like, whose defense is going to step up? I don't think Jefferson's defense is good enough to stop Jones and Tennyson. That's the thing. And I think uh, Malikoff's defense is pretty solid up front. Those are big old boys on both sides of the line for uh, Malikoff. Oh, yeah. And, again, this is another one that I think is going to be an absolute <laughs> banger. There's, you know, there's not a lot of comparison games. Uh, there's a couple. Uh, Tatum, you know, Jefferson beat Tatum uh, last week of the season, 18 to 13. Uh, Malikoff beat them la- uh, the beginning of the playoffs, 62 to 13. But now, to be fair, Jefferson had nothing to play for. They'd already, no matter yeah. what had happened, they had one district. Um, I think Malikoff is a better football team. They're more complete on both sides of the ball. I think Jefferson offensively is the strength, right? Yeah. Their defense, they don't make their name off of defense. Malikoff, defensively, they are so tough up front, right? I uh, uh, think yeah. you get Malikoff with misdirection, but does Jefferson have enough offensively on the edges to really create enough misdirection where you got get guys in space consistently I don't think they do. I think Malikoff – and look, if you're Jefferson and you get guys in space to make a move or two, there's enough closing speed on this Malikoff defense to kind of limit what you've got. So I like Malikoff in this one. Okay, so I'm going to – I've got to do this. I actually forgot to put the thing up. I, I'm going to do this as a two-parter. I, I, can, I can see this game getting away from Jefferson. If they come out and they they can't blink, yeah, exactly. If they it's come out, like start Indiana, Ohio State. Okay, no, I'm not. I, I don't you think know, it's. Look, I think hey, these two Indiana teams are way closer than that. Okay, I, no, but look, hey, Indiana came out and they imposed their will. Yeah, they did. Yeah, right, for three and of the first they four drives, twice. Yeah. in that game, exactly. And look at. The, I, I, if, well, I, so the way if, I. If, I if, okay, I will say this. If Jefferson blinks like that, it gets away from him like Ohio State. Okay, so if I've, Indiana does not blink a couple of times in that, uh-huh. they are in this game to the fourth quarter. Okay, so I, I, I'm sorry. I, I was a little wrong in how I meant that. I meant early. Like, it, it mm-hmm. has to be early. Like, if Jefferson starts out and they're battling mm-hmm. Malikoff and it's blow for blow, I think they can blink a couple of times because that, that'll be in the flow of the game. What I mean is Jefferson can't... I don't think the game will go that I, I can't though. see Jefferson... Jefferson can't look up and be down 21 nothing. No, I don't think they. Not. I don't think they no. have that ability. But if that doesn't happen, I'm totally... I disagree with everything else you say. I think Jefferson can score on Malikoff. Why can't they? Mal, Mal, Jefferson has scored on everybody this year. Now, you can talk about the defense being an issue. Okay, they gave up 34 to Liberty Ilo. They gave up 30 to DeKalb. They gave up 38 to Newton. All teams still playing. Other than that, 15, 12, 14, 12, 13, okay. 27, 18 against the Grandview team that offensively, I mean, folks, they destroyed okay, Grandview. They score more than 38. Jefferson? Yeah. Yes. You think? Oh, yeah. Because they'll need to. Oh, no. Because I, all the game oh, I don't, teams ooh. you talked about, Malikoff is probably better. Oh, well, yeah. Of, co- of course they are, 100%. I, I'm, I'm not just disagree saying, with that at all. Malikoff will win this football game by 7 to 14 points, I think, just because I think Jefferson has to play the perfect game to win this game. And if they do, then they can win See, it. See, again, I just, I, I, again, I always hate when I have to do the but. I, I am not. That's what we're here for, though. You, exactly. I'm just not as sold on Malikoff being so far ahead of everybody this year. I don't think they're so far. Well, they are so far ahead of everybody. I don't think they're so far ahead of Jefferson. But well, yeah, still I, know, I know you don't. I know you don't. I, I think they're ahead of Jefferson. I think Jefferson is probably the best team they face so far this year. Am I wrong? No. Is Jefferson? Ooh, Winsboro. I don't know. Jefferson Winsboro about the same uh, level. I think. Yeah, I think Jefferson's I, better, a little bit more athletic than Winsboro. Yeah. When that's Winsboro, a good point. Uh, when Winsboro took Malakoff to the mat, and Malakoff made a lot of mistakes in that game. Malakoff made a lot of mistakes in that game, and I think Winsboro played a perfect game. And that's the kind of game I think Jefferson has to again, be in to win this game. I agree. Jefferson has to play a more perfect game. I, again, yeah. I am saying I think this goes two ways. Either Malikoff jumps out early and just kind of snuffs Jefferson's will to, to compete, or Jefferson wins 45-42. I'm going to go Jefferson wins 45-42. And I'm going Malikoff wins 
35-21. Uh, I have no problem with that. Again, I, I could, like I said, I could easily see this game. Like, you, you're right. Malakoff can make more mistakes and win. Yeah. All right, let's go to the region semifinals in class. I mean, in region three, we got rematches. Uh, or not re- rematches. A rematch, Columbus 11-1 and one versus Yoakum 8-4. and four. And This game is 7 p.m. at Katie's Legacy Stadium. I'm going to tell you what. I love everything Columbus has done. They're going to probably win this game, but this is a big circle. Watch out because Yoakum has found their flow. And they're athletic. And they're athletic enough. And, you know, they, you know, and and I know that this was right. I think they played Columbus right after the uh, Chris and Rigdon, the the, the Rigdon being out and everything. He's Uh, back. Well, I know, but I'm just going to say, and and Jeremy, if, 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 I can't remember the score flow, but they scored 38 against Columbus. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm just saying th- th- this is a, 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 a no. I think they did actually play against Rigdon because they played Hitchcock the next week, and that was the the week that uh, Rigdon went out. Or, or, right? or yeah, I, I think a so. A lot of people went out in that game. Um, yeah, yeah, that was Lloyd Jones. God, that was went a, out. Well, well, that's what I'm sorry. That's when they, they played so Hitchcock the week. That's after. what you call a war of attrition, yep. right? Yeah. But uh, I look. I think Columbus wins. I, I think we've talked about them all year. Uh, we, we, you, you specifically brought up the, uh, the Scoble kid, uh, Jack, is it, I always forget his name. Yeah. Line, Jack, Jack Scoble. Scoble. Yeah. Scoble. That and, the X factor yeah. And, and, as great defense. as Matt is, as great as Rigdon is, as great as that, you know, offensive line is, uh, I, I, I when he comes in and, and, and it's, it, he needs to make a play. That He'll play is going to get in play. Uh, and get not made. to mention, you can throw him in at tight end. And well, that's – I mean, I'm, I'm talking both sides of the ball. He's the gunner helm. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, he, if, if, in the right offense, if you would have put him in Chad Worrell's Brock offense where they were putting out Division One tight ends every other year, he would have 1,100 yards this year. Yeah. But he's yeah. not needed to do that in this offense right. and in this defense but as well. Boy, what he contributes defensively. But d- I'm going to say this. Don't be shocked if this gets into a track meet. And Yoakum starts matching him. I think Columbus wins, but this is one of those big watch out, folks. Yoakum, no, they've played them, they know them, and they're just as athletic. That's all I'm going to say. All right, I'm taking Columbus, but I Me do too. think it is closer than the last one, right? Yeah. Okay, and they'll take on the winner of Franklin and Hitchcock Friday at Randall Reed Stadium in New Caney. Another great stadium, seven o'clock. Uh, look, Hitchcock. You know they're without their starting quarterback, right? He's but they, ha- they haven't. They have not had a bump since then. They're I, they scoring at the same clip, but they're, they're playing a different animal now. Mm. Jaden Jackson, running back, who averages 196 yards a game rushing. And and, and to 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 be and fair to a that physical front still. Well, hang Franklin. on. To, to be fair to Jackson, a even though he gets the majority of the carries, they still run an offense that he's not getting forty carries a game. And b because they're donkey stomping teams, he's not playing a lot of times in the fourth quarter. Right. If Franklin and Coach Fannin wanted him to get four thousand yards this year, they probably could. Yeah. He is that good. That offensive line. That's good. Every. I mean, Jaden Jacks. Look at what. Uh, what's his name for Franklin's doing at Baylor. Yeah, um, yeah, Brandon uh, Washington. Yes, uh, Bryson Washington. Bryson, Bryson Washington. Washington. I, 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 you and I talk about. It. I think Jaden Jackson eventually is a better overall running back, and both of them, I think, will end up probably playing He's in the got pros. A barring and Bubba, who, yeah, yeah, who could be just as good. <laughs> yeah, um, but I, I like Franklin in a close one. Mm-hmm. In this one, I think it's a really close game. Uh, but what a fun matchup if it happens, Franklin and Columbus in the Region Three final. I have Hitchcock winning this game. Okay, um, just when you, I, I think the thing that. People People forget about – well, first off, they got a a D1 defensive line move in at the beginning of the year. Um, This defense, I mean, you know – yeah, remarkably better this year than they were yeah, last year, right? Gave up 48 to Finette and gave up uh, 36 in the win to Columbus. Uh, other than that, seven, they, they held Belleville to 14. They held Silsby to 10. They held this same Yoakum team that we're talking about. Hey, they could get into a, tra- a track meet with Columbus. They held him to 14 two, a month ago. Don't, don't forget Franklin's defense, though. Outside oh, no, no, no. of their I, two losses, which were to the stalwart teams bigger than them, they have pretty much controlled. Look, my the, whole thing with Frank, narrative. My whole thing with Franklin's defense is it's it's not always, but a lot of it is predicated on their offense keeping the ball away. Mm-hmm. It, it, the times that they have lost, the very few times they have lost, it's when their offense hasn't been able to play keep away. I don't know if this offense can grind Hitchcock down. I I just. I, 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 by the way, this is like a 35 36 game. I'm not saying I like, think it's close. I, I think, uh, I think Franklin can grind it, 
on Hitchcock. I don't. There's not many teams that Franklin can't grind it on, right? And then we have to go with the other elephant that's always in the room with a team like Franklin. The teams that Hitchcock have struggled with offensively ran and threw the ball. Yeah, yeah, that, that, yeah. you know, and, and and so that's again the, the one team that you would compare them to, Belleville. Hitchcock held to 14 points. Yeah. So uh, th- that's just a factor. Either way, again, this is a we, – we knew this region was going to be this. It, it has delivered. It's going to be fun. This is going to be a fun game. I don't care who you're rooting for on this one. You know, just enjoy them. That's, I keep telling people that. Just enjoy these games for what they are. Yeah. All right, let's move down to Region 4. Lano versus Goliath, 6 o'clock at uh, Ferris Stadium in San Antonio on Friday. Uh, yeah, 6 o'clock. Um, Lano eleven and one, Goliad ten and two. It's be a great game, but I think I like Goliad in this one. Yeah, that gummit. I was. I, I don't. I haven't literally looked at the the picks, but I, I kind of feel like, and maybe it's just because of name. Lano's kind of the favorite. I like Goliad. I, yeah, I just. I, I, I feel like we're going to see a dist- thirteen points. Yeah, I, I kind of feel like we're going to see a district rematch here. Could yeah, because Edna uh, twelve and zero taking on UC Randolph ten and two. Uh, Friday, 7 o'clock at uh, Commonlander Stadium in San Antonio. I like Edna and their athleticism, man. Yeah, look, you know, Randolph has had a great year, but of these, all these playoff games, this is the blowout one. This is the one I, I, I think Edna can almost name their score. I, I think Randolph keeps it a little bit closer than a blowout. Uh, do they have a chance? Yeah, they got a chance. I mean, they got a really good running back, right? Mm-hmm. Quarterback's uh, pretty good. Oh, no, their offense is great. Yeah. But Edna's defense is better. Yes. And offensively, they're so athletic, right? So you realize I, yeah. that, uh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, but do you realize that Edna has not given up a point since they played Goliad? October 25th. And they gave up, what, 21? 21, but I think a yeah. lot of that was kind of – it got – Trash stri- time. Yeah, not full trash time, but, yeah. Again, I just – This how- Edna team is not the Edna team last two years that has gone on and just uh, got dominated oh, by no, Franklin, I, I, right? I think this is a team that – This is a legit – State championship type team. I agree, I agree 100%. Yeah. Kind of like Poth was a couple gonna, years ago. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It, they feel exactly almost. Well, I think Edna's maybe a little bit better offensively this, yeah, this could year. Could be, yeah. All right. More athletic, I think. Uh, yeah. All right. That's 3A Division One in the books. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to do the same thing for 3A Division Two right here on Sideline to Sideline, the 3A edition. Hi, I'm Josh Bell with the Miami Marlins. I wear NeuroGuard to help with strength and coordination when I'm in the weight room and help with balance when I'm on the baseball field. One of the most comfortable, reduces concussion, increases performance. You can't get a mouthpiece like that on the market. Not only is it a great product, it's super easy to use. I recommend it for any player at any age at any level. Thank you guys so much and go check out NeuroGuard Plus. NeuroGuard mouthpiece makes it easier to breathe while playing basketball. The unique design is not as bulky as any other mouthpiece and makes you feel safe in concussion. NeuroGuard may control my breathing while I'm riding. It stops me getting concussions while I'm riding. It's very easy to use, so go pick one up today. You know, I'm still doing stunts. You know, in the concussions I've got, and I feel much safer with that. I'm doing, I'm doing, like I said, I'm doing a whole lot better in the gym. So NeuroGuard Plus, and once this one wears out, you've got a customer for life. Because I'm telling you people, NeuroGuard Plus is the way to go. And me, Mark Ash, says so. Parents, kids, coaches, NeuroGuard. It's the future. Stay tuned. I mean, that was a good point. It's 
I think we might start seeing some go back. Terry Bennett back here on Sideline to Sideline. Uh, we, I read it. Shallow Wall versus Vernon. Mm. And then he's going to have one here in a minute. We're doing some show I'm stuff sure behind the be scenes. As stupid as the first one. I mean, bet- between him and Playoff Tree, all I'm looking for is the third Stooge to come in at this point because they've been absolutely <laughs> freaking ridiculous. All right, let's go 3A Division Two. We're going to start in Region 1. And you know what? You can say what you want about them. You can talk about how this year is going to be a little less, and you know they're going to have they're on the they're learning on the fly. But damn it, Canadian is right back in the region I semifinals, know. man. As they got to be an idiot to count Canadian exactly, out. exactly. And did we not walk out of the bushland in week what two or three? And almost I. We didn't count Canadian out, but we were we thought, thinking, okay. They're young; they're, they're going to yeah, learn, you know. But gonna, my yeah. gosh, here they are again, taking on a ten and two Idaho team at Happy State Bank Stadium in Canyon seven or uh, two o'clock on Friday. Which I love that stadium. Yes, unless you have to walk up the home side to go to the bathroom. Oh, is it? They got bathrooms at the top. And it is straight up. It's like LSU's Tiger Stadium. Abe almost. Martin and Lufkin, oh, too. Man. Yeah, Abe Martin's another in the God, one. Greenville's you, bad, too. Yeah, you better be in shape. But, um, man, I like Idaho, but I would not be shocked to see Canadian win this game. I like Canadian, but I, I think this is a straight pick em game. I, I, mean, I think this Idaho defense is starting to come about. They've oh, no, been pretty exactly. good all year, right? Yes, yeah. So, I, and, and to be fair, I think some of this is – that magic that happens when you have a player like Wyatt Davis going through what he's doing yeah. and still playing and, and connect. I mean, dude, you, we've talked about this all the time. When you play certain teams, we were just laughing about it earlier. And we'll you talk know, about quarterback it. was young, right? Oh yeah. And he's starting to grow up now. He's had, you know, when we saw he's him, he's not a freshman or sophomore anymore. He's a junior yeah. playoff stop. I mean, right. game wise. Sure. But, but when, when you play Canadian, it's like when you play Dangerfield in East Texas, or you play Katie down in Houston, you better be up 21 points in the fourth quarter. If you think you're going to win, oh, absolutely. because in the playoffs, the fourth quarter becomes two hours. If there's just something weird about it, when a, yeah. a heavily favorite or a great, team like Carthage or Canadian are down 14 points with seven minutes left. You look on your clock and it's been an hour and a half and all of a sudden they're up by three touchdowns. Yeah. And I think it's just so hard to do that. I'm going to go Canadian, but I think it's going to be a close one. One game I and don't. I've got out loop. And, I, and one game I don't think is going to be close. Littlefield, eight and four versus Wall, 11 and one. Great, look, great season by the Cubs of, I mean, the Wildcats of Littlefield. Chip Green, a really, really good quarterback. Ian Menendez, a good running back. But man, I just, I mean, their playoff path. They're one of those teams that the second place allowed their playoff path to actually probably be a little bit easier. Yeah, and they're taking on a wall defense. It only allows about 12 points a game. And wall offensively with uh, Landon York at uh, quarterback, who can actually throw the football. I'm sorry, what? In that- wait, wait, what? Wall throws the football? They throw the football, <laughs> and Landon York throws it effectively. And then Thomas uh, Lianos at uh, running back. I mean, he's a killer as well, just yep. running the ball between tackles, can kick it outside, uh, off tackle, uh, but it goes back to this wall defense. You look at what this wall defense has done all year, even in their loss. Yeah, it was the 4A Brownwood 17-7. Right. Yeah, they hold them to 17. They hold Mason to 6. They hold Jim Ned to 24 in a great – that was probably their best game of the year. I mean, best you know total game of the year. Yeah. We talked about Idaloo, who you validly say could beat Canadian. They beat Idaloo 33-10 to 10 earlier this year. Yeah. Wall has – Wall has – feels like they've taken that step finally to not being – Almost the region favorite to – I kind of think they're the region favorite right now. Yeah, it, well, this is the best wall team that uh, since they beat uh, Omaha Pelp Hewitt in uh, Waco quite a few years ago, right? What was that, eight, five, ten years ago, something yeah, like that I remember in that, Waco. Yeah. And they made it to the state final. So I think this is the best uh, wall hawk team uh, since that team, and, and I know, sky's I know, the limit for this Wall Hawk team. And I know, like in 2022, they made it to the region final, but they played Canadian, and nobody gave them a. It, it was yeah. you knew what was going to happen. I think I, this I, Wall team is a region favorite now. Yeah, I right? agree, dude. And who, they might match up with the uh, region two favorite or uh, region two champion as well. Let's go on to region two. First one, Toller eleven and one. Holiday ten and two. This is in Mineral Wells. 
noon on uh, Friday. Uh, this is going to be a great game, man. This is a tasty matchup. Uh, Toller has a great defense, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, they are giving up under, what, 10, 11 points a game. It's a pretty solid schedule, too. Cash Clark at defensive tackle for uh, Toller has been dominant all year. The running back, Peyton Brown, is darn near unstoppable behind a really good offensive line. Uh, but then Holiday comes in with uh, Hunter Jones at quarterback, 3,300 yards passing. Uh, Ashton Berry at receiver, 1,300 yards 1300, rushing. Uh, you mean 1,300 yards receiving. Or receiving, and this Holiday defense has been really, really darn good too. Yeah, I, I, do, I think Holiday wins comfortably. Do not, I, I think they do too. Not like forty-two to seven. I think this like, is a lower scoring game, but they could win by ten points to fourteen. That's kind of where I'm feeling. Like right? I'm thinking two touchdowns, like a like a yeah, twenty-eight fourteen. I don't 14. think this is a high scoring game because I think this Toller defense is good well, enough. I, I think, to keep it down. I, I think the higher scoring the game goes, the more Holiday wins. Yes, like I do too. But, but I Toller think that can't Toller do that. Defense can control the line of scrimmage at times. And, uh, and and keep Holiday the Eagles from putting up thirty plus on them. Yeah, right? no, I, yeah. Like I said, I think I brought twenty eight fourteen. Right. That sounds about so good. So we both have Holiday winning, and they'll play on uh, the winner of Gunner ten and two, Jackson uh, Jacksboro nine and three. This is over at Pennington Field, two o'clock on Friday. Give me Gunner in this one. I just I Gunner man. I don't know. I mean, are they prime for the pickings? No. Are they as good as they were last year? Maybe not quite as good. They're maybe not quite as explosive, but they are still pretty dominant up front on both sides of the ball. I don't want any part of that if I'm another team. I think they will beat Jacksboro. Jacksboro will be in it a little bit for, what, two quarters maybe? Oh, I think it was a one-possession game. <laughs> I don't think it's I don't, that close. I, I, I don't. You know, I, I, I think it's I think it's 14-point. Uh, to twenty one point one. Fourteen by point, Gunner. I could say again. We're, we're fourteen to twenty one. No, I know. Saying. I'm just saying we're splitting hairs. If I say seven to fourteen, and you say fourteen to twenty one, yeah. I think just like last year, Gunner's going to know they were in a game when they played yeah, last year uh, yeah. in the playoffs. I mean, Jacksboro gave them the best game of the season last right. year, uh, and so I, I don't think just, I just the quickness of this Gunner team. Well, no, now, it's, it's, that being said, I've only seen him on film once. Uh, during the season, and I saw them scrimmage yeah. against Dallas. Well, no, Christian. for me, it's the, well, but they are so quick at the point of attack. Look, it, well, especially the defensive line, that I don't think this Jacksboro offense's line is going to be able to handle the quickness of that defensive front for Gunner. Look, when, when we get to this point again, I go back to the Canadians, the Gunters, and Dangerfields. It's the, it's not even about what's on the field. It's can Jacksboro get past what Gunter is, the, the 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 prestige, the blue blood of the program. You're, you're going to be up 14 nothing with five minutes left, and, and you're going to end up having to save your season on the one-yard line. I understand I just, that, that, but it's the – I am telling you in this game, that quickness. No, um, I'm, I'm, I'm saying Gunter wins because of all that. I'm just okay. saying all the measurables are, are, are great, but I'm saying even yeah. if you're the favorite when it's a danger field or, or, or Gunter, you've got to – score twice on them before they even know what's going on. Oh, yeah. yeah. Or you've got to score. You've you got to better be for- not let them be within one possession with five seconds left. Yes. Right? And, and, but I do think this is way. I, I, I feel like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I still, I feel like this has been a theme tonight. I think Gunner's still Gunner, but I do think Gunner has taken a step back enough they have. that they can they be have, competed. But their strengths are different. No, I know. That's the thing. No, I agree. That's the thing. I, I you know, their strengths were with a quick quarterback and a really good offensive line. Now there's not a quick quarterback like last year, but they've got quickness on both sides of the line. Their guards can run four yeah. sevens. Oh no, no. And I'm not disagreeing with any uh, of that. Defensive their defensive line can be through the gaps before you get out of your stance. And that's what's crazy about Gunner right now. All right, let's go to Region 3. And I got a feeling we're going to hear from somebody. Woodville 10 and 2 versus DeKalb 11 and 1. This game is Friday at Henderson Lions Stadium. Uh, playoff Tree, would you like to make a comment? Yeah, I would. I want to congratulate my uh, alma mater in Woodville. Uh, Pulling out what a lot of people thought was an upset over Grants Lane. What was it, 48 to 21? Eeps, there's a spider. You know, most of us spruce trees do not like spiders, and here's one just crawling down to daddy long legs. What do I do? Is it poisonous? Wait, I I would think 
trees love spiders because spiders eat insects that eat trees. Well, you know, that's a common a misconception. Um, he's right under my... Uh, yeah, unfortunately, my, my living on here. a lake, you but, get a ton of daddy long well, legs and stuff. Well, you know, that's a common misconception. We really... Like, like pollinators, more like arachnids, so... Uh, uh, wait, wait. Study more? Wait, 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 wait. I, I thought y'all were in the tree two movement. You know, don't pollinate me without my permission. Yeah, I'm in the tree two movement, but I don't like... People like Kochek's coming up and hugging me. We know he's a Democrat, right? He's a tree hugger. Uh, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I thought you would want a tree hugger. I'm, your political views are all over the map, you hippie. Well, you know, I'm from the same piece of boards, right? So we don't, we don't take lightly to all that uh the, the government coming in and marking us for safety. And I, no, no, I want less government intrusion, and I want less of uh, the Kochex types coming in, building up on my board, picking some, you know, and rubbing up against me and all that. He hugs, that's fine, but when you hug with a little hip thrust, that's a problem. Weird thing about him is he has more sap than playoff tree. That, that kind of confuses me. No, there's no way he has more sap than me. No. All right, let's go to the football uh, games now. Win Woodville ten and two versus the Cav eleven and one. Uh, this is one of I those a big tr- a win for playoff tree and his. I wonder. No, if it he really was. was. There. Do you think he was? There? What? Yeah, Do you think playoff tree was at the Woodville game? I don't know. I thought he was at the Pine Tree game. I don't know why he'd be at the Pine Tree. Game. Oh, because of pine. I see. Well, I no, he was tree. definitely probably at the Woodville game. Man, Woodville. 48 to 21 over Grand Saline. Look, beating them. Wow. Yeah. The way they did. I mean, and maybe, you know, I'll admit, maybe we oversold Grand Saline, but everybody was buying in on Grand Saline. And by the way, Grand Saline's future is bright. But, oh, yeah, it's very bright. But do you think anybody outside of Region 3 in that area was worried? I mean, they saw the scores, but you go back and look at the wins. Okay, maybe they weren't against the toughest. The writing was on the wall, maybe a little bit, right? You look at Woodville's schedule, that was a pretty tough schedule, right? Oh, yeah. Going back and looking at it, right? I I see where that happened now. Woodville's 10 and 2, DCAB 10 and or 11 and 1. This is Friday in Henderson. Um, Man, this is a tough one. Look, uh, Woodville's got two losses. Decab's only loss was to Jefferson by six points. And a game it, that Decab led from 90% of that game. That's Jefferson right. had a kind of a. And they uh, got a really good quarterback in Jalen White yep. and uh, running back uh, Caden Wary. Um, man, this one is almost like a toss up, right? I Wouldn't you think Woodville beating Grant Saline like they did would be the favorite? But I think DCAB might win this game by under a touchdown, maybe 1.5 thousand overtimes. Yeah, first off, I, I, I agree with you. This is Woodville's a very physical. One position, one decab, position, one possession team, a game. Yeah. This is going to be a battle. Woodville's um, very, very physical. Always right? are. Um, very both athletic. Sides of the ball. Can DCAB stand up to that? I think they can. I do too. I, I, I think what what they're doing, and it's so funny too, because again, we talk about this all the time. They lost one of their most, you know, prominent players in the history of the program in graduation last year to Weeky Williams. <laughs> and and, and first that off, was a joke, and you just you actually it wasn't a joke. That's his name, Winky Williams. I know. Oh, uh, what? But he graduated, right? That's what you said. Oh, okay. I was saying, but I, when you said that, I just thought Winky Williams. That was a funny name. I didn't think oh. that's who you were actually. Saying. Yeah, I was talking about Winky Williams. Winky. <laughs> well, it's funny you had Winky Williams, who I for the longest time, or not longest, but for like a few weeks, thought he played for you Wink. Think, <laughs> really how many did. times the uh, <laughs> Decab's coach had to go over to Winky Williams? Play, quit playing grab ass out there, Winky. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's been one of those sounds nights. Sounds like folks. a funny conversation. It's been one of those nights, but they, they have a big offensive line, and that's where they they make their hay. And, and yeah. Woodville, as athletic as they are, and sometimes you know this is one of the great things about the size versus athleticism. Sometimes athleticism wins. Sometimes the size does. You just kind of have to roll the the coin and say, well, let's see what happens. I'm like you. I think the cab wins. Yeah, but I think it. Uh, oh, it's going to go a, either way. It's right? going to be a memorable game. It's, Whoever wins Region Three is going to oh. know they've been in it. Here we go. 
Coach X. I know Coach X likes to joke around, but this is going to be the best g- game in 3A Division II this week. Yeah, that's what Coach X has to say about that. I'm sorry. That's what Coach X has to say about that. Has Woodville changed their mascot to the Beavers yet? If not, why the hell not? Beavers and Wood go together like, well, Beavers and Wood. So the Beavers versus the Bears, which is what every – I want to cut all the rest of that one out because we've already walked a fine line on the show, but thank you, Coach X. Um, you don't want to talk about a game that we all predicted. So but- you're censoring Coach X? Yes. Okay. Just Coach X, just remember before you. I had a far right country <laughs> that's all in a different part of the world ask me that I needed Jinping to. Jinping told you. Yes, to. <laughs> I, needed to start, I, I need to start parroting them, but mainly I needed just to Pete stop. I was like, please don't say that. I'm not ordering you not to, but you know, I, I need you to be in the regime. And you know, you're like, yes. Well, I looked up playoff tree has an AK 47 and I'm like, Hey, you know what, dude, I will listen to you, but this is a I match. Think playoff tree is more of a socialist though. So yeah, maybe, you know, that, I mean, I don't that know. Don't mix well with the coach X. He's a socialist. So here's a match. Here's a matchup. We all predicted, but we never thought the, the paths would get them here. Danger field seven and five. What? Happened. All of a sudden, we're going to listen to our offensive coordinator, Chase Johnson's going to show out uh, Rain Wallace and Kenny Mosley. And, and this, all of a sudden, to, we are playing our cues. I, I, I want to make sure I have tried to verify as much as I could. And again, if somebody on Smokey or, or anybody that's listening that knows, email us, grantterryd.com. They didn't go through wholesale injuries. They didn't, you know, no, this is just a just, new offensive coordinator. That, it took them a while, I guess, to trust him or just to execute his game plan. And all of a sudden, they're danger field, but they're playing yeah. Newton. And first off, this right. is such well, a great matchup. This isn't a foregone conclusion. Look, Newton on paper should win this game and beat Danesfield down. KJ Porter, or yeah, KJ Porter, the best running back in three A Division two. I don't think we're going to argue that, right? No, he's amazing. I mean, and he's just what a sophomore. sophomore? Yeah, yeah. Uh, How do y'all what, do that, Newton? Y'all in Franklin, y'all just roll out sophomore running backs who will drop twenty five well, hundred on everybody. So Newton will come out with a KJ Porter type mm-hmm. that will get. That will overshadow the defense that they play. Yeah. That's the thing. They're so quick on defense. They got a KJ Porter, but their defense is like a miniature gunner sometimes. Yeah. Or not miniature gunner. Just I like know what gunner. you mean. Yeah. Like just dominant, right? But nobody talks about that because the athletes they have on the offensive side of the ball. I think Dagefield's up against it this time. Look. I think Dedgeville offensively is going to be able to score against Newton, but I don't think Newton's going to handle the phys- – or that Dedgeville's going to ha- handle the physicality that I think Newton is this year. Yeah. It's not the same Newton team that lost over in Nacogdoches a few years ago to Wascom, right? Yeah. I think this this team is a lot more battle-tested. I mean, just more physical. Right? I agree 100% with that. I agree 100% with that. Uh, and that, that, that was a great Wascom I, team, too. I mean, oh, that was a great Wascom team. I think this Newton team wins, and I think you do, too, right? No, I like Dangerfield. Oh, do you? Okay. Here's why. I wouldn't be shocked to see Dangerfield. Yeah. I'm not just hedging my bets. I'm just – this is a toss-up to me. I think Newton, but – Dangerfield offensively is finding their stroke. Well, well, here's why I feel this way. First off, you know, we have to trust our own rule where we say no matter what happens in week one, you throw out the results. So they lost to Gladewater. Oh, yeah. Then they lost to Tatum in week two. Tatum was a, was a good team. Oh, yeah. Gladewater lo- wasn't that bad. No, but I'm just saying, I think if Dangerfield and Gladewater played now, Dangerfield would win by three touchdowns. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, then they lost to Pleasant Grove. There's no shame in that. And mm. then the center game, that's a 4A team. And center is pretty good. I think where we circled and started truly doubting them, and now we have to, or at least I will stay okay, I was wrong, is they got beat by DeKalb. And we were like, okay, yeah, you're getting beat by DeKalb, but here we are talking about DeKalb, who is still playing in the playoffs. And that was a 30-28 to game. I I understand that, but let's talk about Newton's losses. (laughs) But but, but my point is... is, Western Stark. I never doubted Newton. My whole point is I'm talking about on the doubting. I never doubted Newton. Even when Newton lost... let's compare losses, though. Okay. and I mean, Newton, what... Western Star. Jefferson and DeRitter. DeRitter's discounted simply because we don't know enough. We don't know right. enough about them. 
Yeah. Um, so we, we go off of West Orange, Stark, Jefferson. Two great, solid losses. Right. And that Jefferson was not a blowout. It was, like, 12 points, something like that. Yeah, and honestly, that, that was one of those where Jefferson had a big lead. Newton caught up to him, and then Jefferson yeah. had, to, had a like, a 14-point a swing in that last quarter. That still, But that was a back-and-forth uh, game. It, both, both of these teams have – Game breaking ability. Oh yeah, I mean right? they mirror each other. Not in yeah, style. They do. They not do. in no. style, but, but just in their athletically. Yes. They do. Yes. So you're right. You're right. And so I, to me, that's a toss up. You're taking Dagefield, which is I think a great pick. I am taking Newton because I think Newton has you know the consistency, yeah. right? Um, but yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see Dagefield. Either win. way, I think the these. Two semifinals in Region Three are absolutely oh, just amazing. Terrific. Yeah, and you can almost do both games. Yeah, no, actually, you could all not almost. You could do. I, I was reading the times wrong. One of them starts at one in Nac. Oh, Natchitoches. Oh, I didn't realize that. Wait, what? Yeah, there's I two games in Natchitoches. I didn't realize. I, I was reading that there's as Natchitoches. Also a, uh, is Texas High playing there? Yeah, I think, I think so. I, I just was reading that as Natchitoches. High Marshall. I guess. Or, or? No, Marshall's playing. What? No, where is Marshall? That's right. No, Marshall plays uh, South Oak Cliff. Oh, sock. Yeah, and then, uh, but Texas High, I think, is playing PNG. PNG. I mean, they're Over. playing PNG, not that they're playing at. PNG. Somebody else is playing. Anyway, I, I was reading that as Nagadoches. I guess technically, you, if you got on your, you definitely you can still go. That's not. You wouldn't miss. But an hour and a half, two hours more. Yeah, but it's a. And you have you a meat pie? You ever uh, had a Nagadoches meat pie? Oh God, yes, pie? heck yes, dude. Mm-hmm. One of my on favorites. The river down there. I, I I think Natchitoches is one of those underrated cities that people everybody thinks of Louisiana as New Orleans and that's awesome, but Natchitoches it's well, different. But I it's think awesome. People think about Louisiana as Cajun country, really, yeah. and which is not New Orleans Poor or Natchitoches. Well, Natchitoches is at least a blend. It's southern. No, it's doesn't. It's more southern. I've got family in Cajun country, yeah. and they will tell you Cajun country doesn't start till Opelousas. Oh, no, no. I, I'm talking about, like, just personally spending my time. I, I think oh, yeah, yeah. N- Natchitoches is more southern. Like, you, I, I, Natchitoches would fit in Georgia really, really well. Like, you wouldn't know the difference. I mean, you, you go look at – what's that movie? I mean, I can't think of the name of it now. The Swing Blade. <laughs> oh, that's Arkansas. Was that – I actually never knew where that was set. No, Arkansas. I mean, it could have been Malvern, Arkansas. Oh, okay. I couldn't remember that. Anyway, let's go that's to – Billy Bob Thornton's hometown. Oh, okay. Not that I'm a Billy Bob Thornton fan, but oh, if I'm you want big, to know anything about him – I'm a big him, Billy Bob. I don't know his Land person. Man yet? Uh, no, I keep being actually, told to see good. that. Pretty yeah, good. Yeah, I want to see that. Now we're going to have – you know, when Yellowstone came about – that all these people around the country are also cowboys now from oh, Ohio God. to New York. Now that Landman is a pretty good show and people catch on, we're going to have people from all over the country um, heading out to Midland, Odessa, which there's nothing there but the old past. I was but a they're going to romanticize it. I was a Landman. I pitched a chain for two weeks before I got fired. I, the, well, I, worked I wasn't at- a Landman, but I pitched a chain out in the – Oil patch so, years and years Where ago. I worked at, and this was right before we met, actually. It's right before we moved to Dallas. Um, I worked for a land service that split, so I didn't have to negotiate the contracts. Mm-hmm. I ran the deeds. I found all the information, and then we handed it to the next department, and that would be the guy that – now, there are – you want to talk about great stories, the old school landman that would basically go do all the work themselves, then sell it to the oil companies, mm-hmm. and it's all was commission-based. That, that's not what I did, but I did do landman work. Mm. I can't. I've been told that that's a show I gotta We're watch. Done oil patch work before it was cool. If you're in Texas, you almost. I think you almost. It, road work. I just did it out of college. I did too. Austin, was, but, and went to Iran and uh, went up to Midland and went back and. forth. This was after I was broadcasting. I just mm-hmm. I had it to, the the radio station I worked at in Shreveport shut down right before the season. I had made enough in sales that I could make it through the season, but once the champ, like I literally interviewed for the landman job. Two days after the state championship weekend, mm. uh, and so yeah, I, I mean, I did it. What fifty? It was sixteen years ago. But anyway, all right, let's talk that was more a long football. Time. Less, uh, <laughs> wow, less sorry, folks, our bad. Y'all can skip forward now. <laughs> anyway, let's go to Region Four to finish off the three A show. Or right, uh, let's go Van Vleck six and six versus Tidehaven ten and two. Bay City's Memorial Stadium Friday one p.m. Look, I, I like what Van Vleck has done in the playoffs. They're one of the fun stories, but give me Tidehaven. Yeah, me too. But look at Van Vleck offensively, man. Corey Austin. They've exploded. Twenty four hundred yards passing, man, so far. And got a really good defense that only allows about 26 points a game. I know that's a lot, but it's not a lot. Well, and again, compared to what their offense does, I do like Tidehaven. I love that Tidehaven one point win 
over in East Bernard. Look, they put 29 points on an East Bernard team. They they beat East Bernard 29-28. They put up 29 points on an East Bernard team defense that only gave up, what, 15? Yeah, I think it was 15, Post, 15 or something. Which like. Post still, to me, is one of the best teams that I've seen outside of Lexington, who plays in this next game we're talking about, yeah. in 3A Division Two. This Post – so I like uh, Todd Haven. You like Todd Haven. Poth versus Lexington. Well, hang on, hang on. I do want to go back. I, I want to say okay. this about Van Vleck. First off, when they played Todd Haven in district, it was only 21 14. Um, Van Vleck's six losses are to Ganado by six. They've had the toughest schedule. Yeah, Woodland Christian by 11. East Bernard, that one got away from them. Uh, Vanderbilt Industrial. Uh, by 14, seven to Tide Hayden, 10 to Rice Consolidated. Those are all quality teams, but I just yeah. think Tide Haven matches up better with them like they did. But yeah, Tide Haven, I think just better defense and quicker on the uh, offensive line, and they move the ball at will and win by 14 points. All right. So, all right. So, I like Tide Haven in this one. Yep. Both and Lexington, though. Wow. I've seen dude. both in yep. person. Yep. Wow. Two great defenses, man. The Lexington defense is great. The Poth defense is as good as not better. It comes down to the better quarterback. Major Luna for Poth or Case Evans, a quarterback for Lexington. Both, I think that's a push. Kane Stover at run back for uh, Poth, who is an X factor, but so is Noah Wright-Harris. And yep. running back. Kind of like Lexington. And I thought Poth was going to go all the way to the state championship early in the year after seeing them. Then I saw Lexington. I think Noah Wright Harris, the running back for Lexington, behind that great defense. And that's a big defense. Yeah. They are big up front, man. Um, I like Lexington. I think they're bigger up front on both sides of the ball. And Noah Wright Harris is the X factor. This game could go either way, but I'm taking Lexton in a very close one. I don't know what happened in that Lex or that Blanco loss for Lexton, but you take that out of the equation, they're a clear favorite. So here, here's my problem problem with Lexington. Mm -hmm. I, I they they haven't played a really tough schedule. In fact, you can make the case that the best team that they played, they got beat by. Uh, you know, Rice Consolidated. Blanco. Is, uh, yeah, Blanco, sorry. Uh, Rice Consolidated, a, a, a really solid team. But like we said, Rice Consolidated ain't there yet. Um, beat them in the playoffs. They destroyed George West, who wasn't, you know, good. Or, I mean, they were good. They got the playoffs. But you know what I mean. You yeah. look at Poth, and they beat Comanche. They beat Fall City. They beat Shiner. I mean, th right there alone, and that's just their first three games of the year. Right, right there alone, right. that's impressive yeah, no. as hell. They and beat East Bernard. They beat East Bernard. I, I, I'm at this point with Poth in this region. It, it, until you beat them, I've got to keep going with them. No, you know, I, I totally agree. I mean, with that's you, what, you know. And I know I'm going with the eye test. I saw. Both. Oh, I have no problem with that. Look, this is a this is another right forty two forty twenty eight twenty seven against uh, Caldwell. Caldwell, yeah. So, you know. Yeah, but you're good enough to know. Even when we see bad teams, we know the difference. You right. know, and I know the size and the speed of that uh, Lexton defensive front. I'm taking Lexton in what might be a little bit of an upset. Oh, I think this is right? a pick em game. This yeah, is a straight pick em is. game. I, and like I think the winner of both Lexton versus Tide Haven will be a doozy. Maybe a game we got to be at next week. Every game we've got to be at next week. All right. That's going to do it for this edition. Uh, sorry about the landman talk and playoff tree and the restraining order you are going to get against the show, all of y'all, all at once. But we do love doing this. If you have any questions, thoughts, or comments, email us, grantandterrydestosport.com. Find us on Facebook, sideline to sideline. Email us. I mean, I'm Twitter at Grant and Terry. And until next time, enjoy your Thanksgiving. Be safe. I hope your team wins unless they're playing mine. This is Sideline to Sideline, the 3A edition. Brought to you by New Regard Plus.